All right, we're back with round three of the Shuffle Bus Qualifier conducted on February 25th, 2023 online. Uh, round three, I played against Joni. I'll go into her deck in just a second. The deck you currently see on screen is the deck that I'm playing in the tournament, that I played in the tournament. And if you want more information about that, you can go back earlier in the playlist where I did a thorough video explaining most of the interactions in this deck and how it operates and wants to operate. Um, so, going forward, let's look at Joni's deck. Joni had a very interesting deck that had the same colors of mine, purple, blue. Um, she, you might notice something jump out at you off the screen initially, and that is this very fascinating uh, Dark Heart Betrayer, Dark Heart Sorcerer Betrayer in Aloyan, which is very cool. <coughs> she has four spells in Aloyan for that and pairs it with her own uh other like regular quote unquote regular dark heart sorcerer in purple which has three spells there you could see and uh just you know some other generally decent cards apocamancer is probably not doing a lot of work in this deck and i don't remember what happened in this individual round in terms of the 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 specific plays but i would guess i would guess that apocamancer is not doing a lot of work in this deck um most of the time because there's not there's not like a Drix or anything that's you know yes there's a warmonger mod which produces gizmos uh but that's pretty much it in terms of gizmos i think let's see virtuoso suppressing is a thing that i need to play around uh if i'm taking time to look at the deck lists again like i've mentioned in previous videos i just ran through this tournament very quickly I was spending a lot of the time for the tournament um making sure that i understood my own deck so i didn't have a ton of time to analyze uh, new decks uh, or opponent's decks. Some, right, but not a ton of time. So suppressing is something I should probably play around a lot of the time. Fortunately, with my deck, suppressing is extremely easy to play around if the deck is operating anywhere near carefully because it's pumping the whole board. And suppressing is just one of the worst possible removal uh, removal elements against my the deck that I'm running here when it's operating correctly. However, when combined with Epidemic, it can definitely be an issue. So I think there were several times during the game where I had to try to take lines to play around Epidemic, um, which is, uh, that is a very good response to my deck. It's still, like, it's still not amazing because if I'm pumping the whole board, then if you play Epidemic, generally speaking, you're taking out your board and reducing my board. However, Epidemic is better in this sort of situation for my opponent than something like Firestorm, because uh, for Firestorm, I can just take a bunch of damage and I'm still dealing all the increased attack that I'm dealing, whereas Epidemic actually reduces the attack of my creatures as well. So that is effective. Other than that, there's a Frankenbomb, a Hag, Grimgaunt Predator, something I need to be aware of, but my deck really wants to swarm lanes. So as, as long as I'm careful, I can pretty much play around that. Spirit Reaver is a thing that I have to be aware of. Um, again, it's not like a major issue because it's, you know, the the even minus three is not a huge deal when I have in cycle three when I have the deck rolling. Uh, but if I fall behind, then it's something I have to be aware of. And Dark Heart, uh, of course, is a thing, but uh, I can usually do reasonably well to take it out. Her Cersei had Army Commander 1, Death Touch 2, Soul Siphon... And then just Iron Beard for the other one. So I don't remember which one she ran. So let's jump right into the action and uh, let me remember how it went. Okay, so I think we started out here. I started the recording slightly after the game started. So I drew the forge. I had my opening hand, which was Dreadmaw and uh, Dreadmaw, Om Nom Nom, Dreadbolt, Hibernating Sorcerer, and War Charger. Another really bad opening hand for this deck. Dreadmaw's fine in a general sense to play, but you, you usually don't want that to be, like, the prominent play in the first hand. And the other reason why this is not an amazing first hand is because I'm on the forge, and I have two of my premium pieces of removal. Excuse me, one second, sorry. Apologies, bad allergy day. So I have two of my premium pieces of removal in my hand, and I'm only going to get at most one opportunity to play them. Um, so I, I guess if I get Necromancer on turn two, I can level it up, but okay. So I play Dreadmaw in the middle here. She responds with, uh, what'd she play? Skeleton, uh, Venerable Skeleton. So it's just, it's just gonna, 
Uh, it actually does So playing Venerable Skeleton opposite the Dreadmaw does literal nothing right now. It threatens to kill it next turn, but it does literal nothing right now, and so I don't have a ton of other good options in my hand. Um, so I just Dreadbolt the, the Skeleton and remove that threat entirely. Um, I can't Om Nom Nom it because it's a 4. I can, but it doesn't, it doesn't fire at 4 health. Uh, taunting War Charger doesn't seem to be like a great play here, and Hibernating Summoner does actual nothing because I haven't played a spell this turn, so it's literally just a, a thing in the back. I generally never play the Summoner in this deck unless I have almost no other options or I'm going to have a lot of profit out of it. I would have no profit out of it this turn, and next turn I'm going to, in all of the draw creatures I want to play, not spells. So Especially since my two premium removal, two of my premium removal spells are in my hand right now, so there's no reason to play Summoner here. Taunting War Charger does represent additional threats, but it's just not that big of a deal. Okay, so she responds by, what was that? Uh, it was a removal spell. Spirit Leash, I guess, to remove my creature, which is fine. I don't really care that much about Spirit Leash. It does remove my stealth creature, which is annoying, but... So then we draw into, let's see, so we, we're off the forge and we're drawing into Ghastly Renewal, which we certainly want to level, Shambler, which we generally want to play, Protective Virtuoso, which we don't care about at all, except that it's a scientist and it enables the Nano Swarm in our hand, but that's generally not the plan we're following in this deck. And we'd love to have an Electronet target, but uh, no guarantees on that. So she starts out by playing Gloom Reaper Hag on the turn two, uh, which is fine. I think, I think I, yeah, I think I just level up Renewal here and play uh, one Mindless Zombie. This is not a fantastic play. I don't think I have a ton of fantastic plays, but I'd like Shambler to live an additional turn. So, uh, I think I'm considering here whether or not, because remember, I have the specific iteration of Shambler where, uh, it's, it's on an apparition, so I specific, so I will be able to sack, uh, the Mindless Zombie when I play the Shambler to give the Shambler plus two plus two, but that still doesn't take out the Hag by itself. So my options here, assuming I'm taking the Grim Renewal line, and I am, is to either play Grim, uh, to play the Mindless Zombie somewhere, where I can, um, where I can use it to sack to the Shambler, but sacking to the Shambler doesn't make a lot of sense here. Um, the other option I could have done here is I could have just played Protective Virtuoso in the middle lane or plan on playing Protective Virtuoso and then play the Shambler somewhere else, assuming that it will get killed, but just to level up the Shambler. I generally, I, seven power in the middle lane is something that I, the lane doesn't matter, seven power um, is something that I want to kill. So I think I probably want to play Virtuoso here, which means I am cho I'm choosing between leveling up Shambler and leveling up uh, Grim Renewal. In retrospect, I probably would have played Shambler first, although I would expect it to immediately die, so it's kind of six and one half dozen the other. Um, I don't like that play uh, that I just made because I putting the, I, I'm basically committing to chumping here because we're placing the the zombie with with protective virtuoso is a complete waste of of I mean, it levels up grim criminal so it's not ghastly renewal i keep saying grim renewal sorry there's a card in keyforge it's called grim reminder and ghastly renewal and they do similar things so it's like screws in my head every time i look at the card ghastly renewal so leveling up ghastly renewal which is the soul forge card um is a uh, is a good thing but i think i probably shouldn't have put the zombie there because it there are all sorts of lines I could take, but that prohibits most of them. So she plays a Camouflage Technohulk. I don't really care about this card. I mean, yes, it is three damage on stealth, but it doesn't. it's not likely to make a huge difference. It has mobility, which is something I have to be aware of, but it doesn't really matter at all right now. Um, so I probably should take out... See, the, the problem is now I've set myself up to not do the obvious thing which is to take out, yeah, to play the Protective Virtuoso to take off the hack. But if I do that now, then I'm playing it on top of, I'm playing it on top of my zombie, which is just, now I'm playing it here. So actually, this is, okay, given that I didn't play the Virtuoso first or didn't leave the lane open in front of the hack to play the Virtuoso, this is the best I could do. And the reason why is because this will kill, no, actually, I'm sorry, this is even, this is even dumber. I thought originally, originally this would have been a good plan if that creature didn't have stealth. But the creature I just played it opposite from, the creature that she played, has has stealth. So this doesn't actually do anything. It will allow me to mobility it over in front of the hag and kill it next turn unless anything weird happens. However, um, however, the uh, I just basically played a zombie for 
I guess I'm soaking seven damage, but I I don't really like this turn in retrospect. I think I probably would have played the Shambler out first, assuming that it would be killed this turn, and then just to level the Shambler. Or if I'm going to play the Ghastly Rune, we'll play the zombie somewhere else, and then put this protective thing in front of the Hag so I kill the Hag right now, because I'm going into a situation where I'm off Forge, and there's a ton of additional options she's going to have to remove the protective version of before it does its main objective of killing the hag. So I just take a bunch of damage here. Um, the hag does take three damage, so the hag should be at two. Uh, yep. And then I take stealth damage. And now I have to actually decide, depending on what I draw. If I draw, like, something interesting, let's pause here for a moment before I talk about this hand. If I had drawn something interesting, maybe. If I had specifically had Om Nom Nom still in my deck, then that play that I just made is better, because then I can remove... Gloom Reaper Hag with Om Nom Nom if I had drawn it this turn. I'd have a 50-50 shot if it was still in my deck, but we know it wasn't in my deck, so that makes the play worse. Uh, Dreadbull also not in the deck, so that's just kind of unfortunate. I think I make up for it by drawing two very important cards in my deck, which is Necromancer, so I can level up the Shambler here, and Rally Inventor, um, causing me to have enough damage unless she has removal to remove both of her creatures currently. So, I think I want to play the Necromancer first. It's the most flexible play. Yep, open lane the Necromancer, because it's Forsaken, which means it gets a pump if I play it in the open lane. And then activate it, immediately upgrade the Shambler, I assume. Uh, I think. I mean, I could upgrade Om Nom Nom, but that seems real bad. Yeah, okay. In comparison, it seems bad. It's not bad in a vacuum. But I do upgrade the Shambler. That makes the most sense. And... So now I've got, you know, Necromancer on board. I assume she's going to remove it here. Uh, she plays Frankenbomb. Which actually is an interesting play because it doesn't remove it this turn. It gives me a window to, to take care of it. So I choose to remove the Virtuoso there. Um, I am not sure about that play at all. That doesn't make any sense because the Virtuoso... Oh no! Oh wait! <laughs> Hold on. So, the, the other reason why I just kind of... I think I just blanked because I was still figuring out the deck. But the Protective Virtuoso, of course, has it has Defender. So playing it opposite a stealth creature is triply useless. Even more so than I indicated before. It's just very dumb. So it doesn't do anything whatsoever. So mo at least I'm mobiling over to do something. But now I have this weird Rally Inventor interaction. Um... So I can either replace the Virtuoso and hope that she doesn't have decent removal or, um, which I do, and then, okay. So at least I, by doing this, if she does not have removal in hand, and I think we looked at her removal before, her removal is kind of like Epidemic, which would be fine for me here. Uh, Spirit Least, which she's already played. Heavy Artillery, which is like attack-based removal, but that's not going to actually, on, on the Inventor, that would be pretty good right now, but that's about it. Tech upgrade would be pretty decent. Okay, so she has tech upgrade that I don't think we've seen. Again, if this were a super competitive game, I would have analyzed her discard more. Uh, but she... Oh, and I forgot, she also suppressing, right? So that's an even better argument for why that line didn't make a lot of sense. Because uh, suppressing removes that creature. Um, and then I take seven points of damage. So there was... Early on, it's kind of a little bit sloppy with the interactions here. I shouldn't have probably done a couple things so far. I get away with seven points of damage, which is not ideal, but... All right, so we're in cycle two. So we draw a Necromancer. Her cycle... So she is playing Circe as her commander. Uh, so she has upgrade a level one card or discard return to your hand. Pretty weak ability. As far as army commanders go, it's pretty weak because she's got to do something additionally to get the level one in discard, so she can't do anything until next turn. I think the Virtuoso is a scientist, yeah, so she plays uh, her own Grim Reminder for two this time instead of one, and already we have a board state that's looking very, very bad for us. Um, but we're going to draw into other stuff like Rallying and whatever, so we play Necromancer. We have no activation, but we play it now because it's the only open lane available to make sure that we can do that. We're going to have Embrace, we're going to have a bigger Protective Virtuoso, we're going to have options to block. Um, I don't Keep in mind that my Forge Board ability is create two gizmos at this level, which would be pretty good. It would block both of these things. The downside to that is I would lose all my gizmos if I draw into Stitcher next turn. It's a real feels bad because I'm not actually protecting myself from anything. 
So she plays Grimanu. Okay, so then she plays Spirit Leash to remove the Necromancer, I assume. Because uh, the Spirit Leash at level 2 does not remove... Remove the smaller Necromancer. Spirit Leash at level 2 does not remove my bigger Necromancer. So she kills that. Um, that's fine. She doesn't have any spirits, I don't think. Yeah, I was just checking for spirits. She has no spirits. So it is a removal, but it removes, like, a creature that I don't care a ton about at this point in the game. And it's also opposite only a 3 damage creature. So I think at this point I contemplated using my... Because if I play uh, Embrace and use my Forgeborn ability, I can wipe her board. But uh, the downside of that is that I'm not going to be able to activate Stitcher if I draw it next turn unless I get something specific. So I think I contemplated this for a while. I could... So, one of the options here, I don't know if this is what I actually end up doing, pause it for a second. I could use my Forge Horn ability, make two gizmos in the, in the two lanes you see right there, where she's got a seven and five creature, and the suppressing doesn't have any armor, no. So, um, I could create two gizmos there just to kill it, and then I could use the embrace on the thing opposite my gizmo, so that if I draw Stitcher specifically next turn, which is uh, one-third chance, right? Because there are 15 cards left in the deck, and... One of them is, I'm drawing five, so I'm drawing a third of the deck, and, and one of the cards I'm looking, the card I'm talking about is Stitcher. So I think I like that play. I don't know if that's what I did, but I remove the one zombie, I take three, the zombie across from my Gizmo, I take three damage, and I use, I do have to use the Forge Board to do that, but I remove both of those creatures. That action is bad if I draw Stitcher in turn three, and the Gizmo is dead by then, and I don't have a replacement, but it's good if I draw Stitcher next turn or don't draw stitcher at all this cycle um so i think i like that it's better on average and it saves me a bunch of damage did i do that is the question i think i'm contemplating here yeah looks like i do do that And then I'm thinking, I think what I'm contemplating, I paused for a minute here, I think what I'm contemplating is do I want to play another Gizmo um, right now? Sorry, not do I want to play another Gizmo. Do I want to, I have to play another Gizmo. Do I want to play another Gizmo in that lane versus putting it somewhere where it would be saved? But the only place I could put it where it would for sure be saved would be um, if it were opposite... something I was removing. So actually, now that I'm, now that I'm talking, no, wait, that doesn't make any sense. Wait, no, I don't, don't put it there. No, no, Eric, what are you doing? All right, I guess that gizmo survives. Well, okay, all right, so I don't really hate this. I don't gain life through this route, but I do the protective virtuoso. All right, so past Eric has talked Eric into this being a halfway decent play. So the Protective Virtuoso here, the benefit of playing this in this particular way is that the Virtuoso will live, so I will have another blocker. I will still take the exact same 3 damage, but I will have that 4-4 four, four Gizmo will still be there. So I played it over the Gizmo. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I take the bleed off the hag. So I stop, I stem the bleeding in terms of board state at the moment. Um, and I take three. Which I may have already done, I didn't see. I think I already took three. So, all right. So I draw into Stitcher. So this is why, this is precisely why I wanted to make sure that I had the ability to uh, use Stitcher if I had a minion in play, right? That's what I was doing. All right. So there's a high risk and a low risk play here. The high risk play is to play Shambler first. Maybe kill the Virtuoso, but probably not to make it bigger. So play Shambler first, hoping that my Gizmo doesn't get removed so I have a Stitcher target so I can Stitcher back the Inventor that died earlier this cycle. Uh, or last cycle, I don't remember. Whatever. There's a level 1 Inventor in my discard that's for sure the target of Stitcher. That's the high-risk play. The low-risk play is just making sure that I have access to the Gizmo right now and playing Stitcher right now, which means that my Shambler will not get a board pump later this turn. But... That is by far the safest play, and the Gizmo is at such a, a health total that you can sneeze on it, and I think she still has. She has all sorts of stuff, like she has, uh, I didn't check her discard before this, but she has, presumably, unless it's been discarded, she has Epidemic, 
Uh, second level Spirit Leash has already been played. So she has Epidemic, second Suppressing, which for sure kills the Gizmo. Would she kill the Gizmo? Uh, yeah, that's her only target right now with Suppressing, so she would kill the Gizmo. Um, we haven't seen either Dark Heart yet, uh, but uh, Tech Upgrade could also kill the Gizmo. I think, I think the correct play here is just to do the Stitcher thing right now to make sure that you upgrade Stitcher and that it fires. Uh, I'm looking at my targets for Stitcher, but... Rallying Inventor is the obvious target. I'm not really going to stitch her back a, a Shambler. That doesn't make a ton of sense here because I have enough creatures. Yeah, okay, that's what I do. I play the Stitcher immediately. Now, the, bo the bonus of playing the Stitcher immediately is that it kills her minion um, because it's tormenting Stitcher, so extra added benefit off that that I don't necessarily need. So I'm going to stitch her back the Rallying Inventor here, uh, which replaces on top of the Gizmo, so it gives the, the whole board a healthy pump, and then... Um, I think that I can, I think that I want to Necromancer activate to, yeah, so this just, this just makes the board go crazy, essentially. You could see how, how swingy this deck is when you were able to fire this. Um, but I think I want a Necromancer to, to upgrade the Stitcher immediately. That way Stitcher, yep, I think so. That way Stitcher's at level three. Um, so next cycle, when I draw back into Stitcher... If I happen to get uh, the second level rally inventor upgraded to level three, then I can stitch her back the, the second level rally, the third level rally inventor um, in the next cycle. But upgrading stitcher makes a lot of sense here. So I'm already, I already went from being in kind of a bad shape board wise, prioritized keeping a minion on the board, which was correct last turn, and also prioritized, generally speaking, having bigger creatures on the board. And here comes a very well-timed epidemic. It's only level one, but it still, it still hurts a lot. Um, wait, did she upgrade epidemic? <sighs> oh, I think she did. Yeah. So it's actually even better now. Even if I, even if I had looked at her discard pile, and saw that epidemic one was in the discard pile, I can't not make that move because she could still upgrade epidemic. By the way, what, what, let me pause. What she was doing was using her Forgeborn ability, which was Army Commander. I just got done talking about how that was not that threatening, but it was threatening. But this was like the perfect usage of it, that she was fortunate enough to draw Epidemic and be able to use this. I still have to make that play because i got to level up the relevant cards. And if she does that, she does that. Um, and that is what she did. She got to upgrade to 5-5, five, five, and that was like the perfect number for this particular board state. So... So I play the Shambler out as I intended to do, regardless of what happened. The downside, so the down, the one downside to playing it in that order is that by not having the Shambler out, um, I don't get any. I would have got a bunch of Shambler triggers if that happened, if the Shambler was out. But by doing this, I at least get to, um, and I got to pump the Shambler by sacking uh, the Rallying Inventor, which is only like a one-two at the time, which makes sense. She plays level 2 Suppressing, so her draw is pretty good here uh, for what she needs to do. So she plays level one suppress, level 2 Suppressing to kill my other Necro. Necro's already done its work, um, though, and that kills... Uh, that kill The Shambler kills that, and then we go to combat. It's a decent turn for her, given the threats that it was posing. But we have a decent draw here. We draw back into all of the removal that we care about, basically, plus Rally Inventor. Rally Inventor is a little unfortunate here because I don't have any... I'm not going to replace the Shambler. And remember, I've used my Forgeborn ability, um, which is unfortunate. She plays Blue Dark Heart Sorcerer, which I think I immediately Dreadbolt here. There's no reason not to. Um, Dark Heart is probably the only thing that allows her to get any sort of profitable re-entry back into the, the game here. So I kill that immediately. Does level up Dreadbolt. And then I think I have to play Rally Inventor without replacing anything. What does she play? Hag? Okay, so pause. So Hag is an 8-6, so that is going to kill the Shambler. So Rally Inventor 2 could come in at most uh, in this hypothetical as... And you could see the difference between having access to the Forgeborn Gizmos and not here. If I had access to the Forgeborn Gizmos, this would be amazing. Um, it actually, the, the, the Shambler would still die on doing the math now but if i replace the shambler with the rallying inventor um i will still kill 
the hag, and I'll have a gizmo left over that's pumped in the back. But I lose out on one trigger of shambling damage. I still think it, it's probably worth it. I should probably replace it here um, rather than just playing it out to the board. Actually, you know what? Nah, I don't really need to do that. Because um, if, I, if I don't replace anything, I'm still playing a gizmo and I have a 4-5 on the board. And I think we're... Did I do the math correctly? Are we now going into cycle 3 after this card? Because if we're now going into cycle 3, then it's for sure correct. Because I'll be on the forge and I'll have... Um, yeah, I think we're going into cycle 3. I think this is turn 3 of cycle 2. So I think I should open lane this, even though I'm not getting the pump ability... Because that gives me a gizmo sitting on the board, and I don't have to use my Forge Born ability at the beginning of cycle three if I draw up the Stitcher turn one. So I kind of like leaving this in the open. I also don't really want to like pumping a gizmo, playing Rallying Inventor just to just to pump a gizmo to five five when I'm probably going to want to replace that gizmo with something. When when we're not on the Forge, right? We're not on the Forge here, so it's in the back. So I don't really like that. Um, I think I would just play, I would open lane rallying here, get my trigger. Uh, wait, what? Wait, what did I do? I just heart, I played Electronet so it traded favorably. Mm. So that's good if I think that I'm going to need Shambler activations this game to win. I don't really think I am, even though I'm, you know, down by 11 health, I don't feel like I'm in any imminent danger here. I've already killed Darkheart. I haven't seen other Dark Arts, and I know that my Cycle 3 and 4 is going to be great because I've leveled up the relevant cards. I do save my Shambler this way, but I... Well... So the argument for this play is Epidemic, right? Because she's already leveled up level 2 Epidemic. Level 3 Epidemic is 8-8. Eight, eight. So if this, this is insurance against her playing level 3 Epidemic uh, early on in Cycle 3, because then I will have other creatures on the board, and this is my insurance. So that's, you can make an argument that this is a decent play against Epidemic. I still think I probably would have rather leveled up Rallying Inventor here. Although, remember, my level two, my level three Forgeborn ability is play a Gizmo Minion, upgrade a card in my hand. So if I draw Rallying Inventor, I, that's, that's the, I have the whole package right there. Um, and of course, we go to cycle three, and that's what we draw. We draw Massive Protective Virtuoso, and we draw Rallying Inventor. Now, keep in mind, though, if I, like, I can use my Forgeborn here, but if her response is Epidemic, then I don't have a lot to rebuild. Um, if I had done the line I had described earlier, which was replace that with Rally Inventor, um, or sorry, Open Lane Rally Inventor, I'd have two creatures on the board that are threatening. I would not have a Shambler, but I have two creatures on the board that were threatening, and I have a target to replace with Rally Inventor that would not require me. This would be Rallying 3 now, so I would not have to activate my Forgeborn and I would have had uh, gas for the remainder of the of the cycle, depending on what I drew. So I yeah, I, I still should have I should not have played Electronet. That was a very I was because I wasn't playing it for free. So her and her second one is Death Touch, right? So unfortunately, because her ability is Death Touch, she can just kill my Shambler. Her level level three Forgeborn ability, she can just use it to kill my Shambler, which is yet another reason why I should have open lane stuff. Protecting the Shambler is a bad idea. So I use my I use my Forge Born ability right now, which is now even worse because assuming she draws Epidemic, then my board's going to get wrecked, and I'm not going to have an easy mechanic to get back in the game. Um, I will have Ghastly Renewal, so that is a thing that I could use to get back in the game. But this is this is not nearly as good uh, because if, I I do pump the I pump the board, but her level three Forge Born ability is unconditional removal of anything on my board other than the Rallying Inventor because it's level three. That's it. So she should, she's probably going to do that to remove the Shambler right now, I would guess. Granted, my board's already pretty big, and so Epidemic level 3, which is 8, minus 8, minus 8. I do have Insulation, but she, she just kills my Shambler. It would have been better if I did it the other way around, because my board would be even more impressive, right? There'd be no Shambler, but it would be even more impressive. Um, and I still would be out of range, is her, my creatures would be out of range except for the Gizmo, or the Mega Gizmo from her Forgeborn ability anyway. So she just uses her Forgeborn ability to kill my thing. Um, I gained some health on the Shambler, but that's that's a suboptimal route. Alright. 
so I don't remember what she does here. Oh, she plays Dark Heart in Opalane, sorry. So, the problem with playing Dark Heart is it's, this is now the other Dark Heart, so it's level one. It's not particularly threatening. Yes, it could gain her a little bit of life, but my board is now swelling to the point where, um, you know, where I'm able to do a bunch of stuff. I also was thinking in my head that she's not, her playing Dark Heart there, unless she's like, third level bluffing me means that she doesn't have epidemic in hand so i can feel comfortable playing something else to threaten damage here um i think i should probably i don't mind playing nano swarm here because if i draw grim renewal then i can uh well this is another reason why having to use my forge Born ability this turn is, is even worse because now now if i hadn't done that nano swarm would be great because i would she would either have to immediately draw Epidemic, or I could draw Grim Renewal, reanimate the board twice, and take everything well out of uh, pump range. So she just plays Warmonger Mod, level 1, so a lot of her cards that she's playing are not leveled up, which causes a bit of a problem. Like, she literally just is able to chump uh, the biggest thing and takes a whole bunch of damage. Now, she does have a Bailout card, but she has Epidemic, uh, and I took some bleed damage off the Dark Heart, but... If she doesn't draw Epidemic this turn, the game is probably over. Okay, so now is the interesting thing. So now I have, keep in mind, remember, in the back of my head I'm thinking Epidemic is 8. If I have anything that's above 8, it'll survive. Uh, before I get into my options, let's see what she does. She is looking in her deck. Is that a thing you're allowed to do? Oh, I remember this. I'm going to fast forward. So basically what happened here was there was a card that somehow accidentally... We spent a couple of minutes here reconstructing this. There was some issue with TTS where one of her cards didn't get shuffled back into her deck. Um, so we had to find that out. We had to figure out what it was. We had to shuffle it back into her deck. Um, and then there was no no problem. I think she, she put her hand back in her deck, put the card back in the deck, shuffled the deck, and then redrew five, which is like a fine way to do it, so I'm just going to fast forward a bunch, because she does, she takes a minute to, we take a minute to redo all of this. Okay, so she redraws a hand. Okay, all right, there we go. So we fixed that problem, there was just an issue with um, the thing, and she plays Gloom Reaper Hag. Gloom Reaper Hag 3 is a 9-8. So, now, um, I can do something very nonsensical right now, which is what I probably should do. I don't remember if at this point in the tournament I had realized I could do this particular interaction. The downside to doing the interaction I'm about to suggest to you is that I remove stuff off the front line because I'm off the forge. But because I have Tormenting Stitcher in my hand, what I can do is I can... I can replace the Rallying Inventor with Tormenting Stitcher. And then, because Rallying Inventor is then in the Banish Pile, I can then use the ability of Tormenting Stitcher to replace one of the other minions, probably one of the smaller ones. Although it doesn't have to be. It could be the Mega because it would survive Epidemic longer, but probably one of the smaller ones with Rallying Inventor that I just removed. So that is definitely the best play here. Uh, not just because it's good, but it also provides additional epidemic insurance. Uh, I will tell you, you'll know immediately whether or not I saw that line based off of what I do here. The, the, the one argument, even if you see that line against doing that, is you're removing 11 damage from the rallying inventor off the front line. But you have to believe that there's a ton of things she can do to chump block the rallying inventor. So if I don't realize that, what I'm like, the, the telltale sign for whether or not I realized I could make that play would be if I rally, if I tormenting Stitcher into rallying two, um, which is not a terrible play because it keeps rallying three on the board. Mm, I guess. The, there is a big difference, though, because rallying two gives me a regular gizmo and rallying three gives me a mega gizmo. So I think it's probably worth it 
to do that, like rather than playing Tormenting Stitcher in an, in an open lane. Um, I still, yeah, well, that's what, okay. So I'm going to play this here to pump my creature plus two. And then I'm going to, I think, well, no, now I know. So I either didn't see this play or I decided it would be slightly better because it would, it would give, uh, it would keep Rowling Inventor three on the board, but I don't really like this play in retrospect. I think I'd rather reanimate, tell me in the comments if you agree with me, but I, I think I'd rather reanimate Rallying three here because I get the Mega an additional board pump, which is a four, four. So that means that the Mega Gizmo that comes in is a 10, 10, which means it survives Epidemic if she immediately has an Epidemic here. And I'm, I am creating bigger creatures in those lanes, um, but not a huge fan of this, because the 5-5 five five is, is... Okay, so she doesn't play... She does not have... Epid I'm assuming she doesn't have Epidemic. She would play it if she had it. So she plays uh, another level 1 removal spell that's... Uh, removal spell that's not that good here. Heavy Artillery just to... I think maybe make the Gizmos trade. No, it actually... Oh, yeah, it does. It does make the thing trade with the Mega Gizmo. Okay. Note that if I had played Rally, if I had reanimated Rallying 3, I'd get one additional pump, so that would not be possible as a play. I don't know if she had better cards in her hand, that she could have done something else, but that's still not particularly great. I do, as a benefit of this play, I do keep Rallying 3 in the front line and punch through 14 points of damage, so that is relevant, but uh, I don't think that, I think I like my other play better. Also, keep in mind that the other play would have Rallying 2 still in the discard. So if I drew in a Grim uh, Ghastly Renewal, Ghastly Renewal, if I drew in a Ghastly Renewal here and I had one of the top two Rallying Inventors in my discard, I could reanimate the Rallying Inventor over the first Rallying Inventor and then reanimate the other one. So, yeah. But I did draw a Necromancer here. So I'm looking at my discard pile as to what I can play in my discard pile. Unfortunately, and this, this is a bit unlucky, I, this is cycle three of, sorry, turn three of cycle three, and I did not draw Grim Renewal. Ghastly Renewal. Ah, I'm just tattooed that on my forehead or something. Ghastly Renewal. Well, that wouldn't help. I can't see it then. But Ghastly Renewal. So that means I can't play Ghastly Renewal and then play Necromancer to play Ghastly Renewal three out of the discard pile, which would be otherwise possible. So what do I pull here? Do I pull Nano Swarm? Nano Swarm is okay because it pumps all my non Nano Swarm at. Oh, actually, it's only a two. Yeah, that's not great. I mean, it's probably the best play I have, but I play Nano Swarm so I could play two Gizmo minions. I don't even know if I want to play two Gizmo minions. That's a weird thing. Like, it actually doesn't improve my board position, which is ridiculous, but it doesn't. Uh, I just create a 4 4? I got rid of a 5-5 five five to create a 4... Wait, what? Oh, sorry. I forgot. I forgot that Nano Swarm 2 was Megas. I, for some reason, was thinking level 3 was the only Megas. So, okay. So, it is profitable to play a Mega Gizmo over another Mega Gizmo, which makes it a 12-12. Um, and, of course, now, if she doesn't have Epidemic, like, the game is probably over. Because I don't think she has anything in her deck that's going to be able to deal with this other than Epidemic. It's all out of the range of suppressing. It's all out of the range of um, spirit leash. Doesn't I mean maybe does a little bit on one, but doesn't do enough. She basically has to have epidemic or nothing, and of course she has epidemic because why not? Um, so she plays epidemic. It doesn't notably it doesn't remove anything on my board, <laughs> which is crazy. But it does remove four x. Uh, wait, what? Why did that kill the rallying inventor? Did I miss something? I don't understand what just happened here. Did she not just play Epidemic? What? What are you doing, Eric? Oh, she played... S oh, I'm sorry. Okay. The art is very similar. She played Spirit Leash 3 first to get one Dark Heart hit, and then played Epidemic to get a second Dark Heart hit. Um, and in the, in the meanwhile, I played a card that would guard, that would take out uh, Epidemic Insurance, which was uh, Combat Operator. 
So I would at least get a gizmo if combat operator was killed. That's what happened. Sorry, the art's very similar from this, uh, this far of a zoom out. So she played Spirit Leash to kill that. I don't know what else she has, but I don't think that that's particularly useful. Because you could just play Epidemic, and then if you had anything positive after Epidemic to follow up, that's what you want to do. The, the one extra two damage hit you're getting off Dark Heart for doing it this way doesn't make any sense. If you have literally any creatures to do that with, plus remember that, like, the other Spirit Leash actually killed the thing. So if you had done it a different way, you could have played Epidemic and Spirit Leash and killed the Necromancer, which is way better to kill than the... Um, than the level 2 Rallying Inventor. The level 2 Rallying Inventor is dangerous because I can use Ghastly Renewal to reanimate it, but I can do that whether it's on the board or whether it's in the Banish Pile. Um, in fact, putting it in the Banish Pile makes it slightly easier for me, so I wouldn't have done that. I would have killed Necromancer, uh, which she might do here anyway. But we're So we're now in Cycle 4, uh, and my hand, my draw is bad. Now granted... I can't draw Rallying, Necro, or Stitcher because those are all on the board, all level three of those, so I have nothing else. But I do have my, this is one of those moments where my Forgeborn 4 really comes into play here. I can repurpose uh, and then reanimate stuff. So repurposing a Rally Inventor is very good. I think she decides her level three Forgeborn is bad. Sorry, level four Forgeborn is bad. Uh, for her in this situation. doesn't do anything for her in this situation. Literally nothing. Um, she can destroy one of her creatures to pump something else, but doesn't do anything. So, um, I think she, if she has a way to remove Necromancer, she is considering doing it. Necromancer itself is actually, she doesn't actually have to remove Necromancer this turn, because I can't do anything. Because I'd have to play something and then activate to play it again. And what am I going to play that's, I guess I have a gizmo I can play it to improve my board slightly, but... Um, but she just straight up fires off third level suppression uh, to remove my Necromancer. Now keep in mind, if she did not, if she played the Spirit Leash or whatever in the other way that I described last turn, she Necromancer would already be dead, so she could instead suppress my Rallying Inventor and then play this either in an open lane or opposite something else that's dealing damage like Stitcher or something. Um, so like, it would be an improvement on her position. But I've already weathered the worst of her removal. I've already dealt. I've already fought through Epidemic Three, and now I'm just trying to figure out a way to close out the game. What makes the most sense? Um, I can play Dreadmaw here. It's a stealth creature. I think I'd probably rather play Combat Operator Two because I can actually do both. Um, oh, or I can do what I'm about to do, which is now that you've used Epidemic Three, I can repurpose and use a Combat Operator to repurpose Rallying Inventor. On top of, I'm guessing, I don't no longer need to worry about Epidemic Offense, so I think I should repurpose Rally Inventor on top of the Far Gizmo on the right. Um, it would punch forward the most damage, and uh, I don't need the full pump. So I think I'm combat operating over Rallying Inventor. So targeting Rally Inventor with repurpose, combat operating over that. Yep, replacing the Gizmo, yep, that's what I would do. So then, uh, sorry, I get the Gizmo pump. And then I'm batching, obviously, playing the Mega Gizmo first. So there's a Mega Gizmo. Pump the board. 4-4. Four, four. All right, I'll fast forward through that process. Okay. So then she plays Ghastly Renewal 2, which gets her two Brutes because the Virtuoso is a thing. So she is able to block effectively all the damage that's coming in right now. I don't have a ton of good answers in my hand. Um, I could play something over a... A Mega Gizmo, like playing the Dreadmo over a Mega Gizmo seems fine, because it's going to take out the Brute, and then she's going to need an aggressive creature. Well, I was thinking playing over that Mega Gizmo, but playing it over that Mega Gizmo seems, seems also fine, because now next turn she's either going to need removal, which I don't think she has anything now, but because she's played level 3 Spirit Leash, level 3 Epidemic, level 3 Suppressing, so I don't think she has any removal that can deal with this. And... If I looked at her deck, I don't think she actually... I'm just scrolling through real quickly to see any aggressive. No, nothing. Like, maybe there's, like, some elaborate Apocamancer stuff. We've seen none of that so far. But I'm reasonably certain that she literally cannot stop the Dreadmaw with anything in her deck. She can't put anything in front of that. The Virtuoso doesn't have mobility, right? Yeah. 
Like, I think as long as I activate the Dreadmaw and get it up to 15, I think she literally cannot stop the Dreadmaw based on what she has in her deck. I don't, I literally think that the Dreadmaw, it is impossible because I'll get it up to 15, activate it once, I'll get it up to 15, I think it'd be done. However, um, I'm just going to play Ghastly Renewal and reanimate two Brutes here, uh, which is fine. Uh, if I still had Necromancer, this would be absolutely insane. Because I could, I could, it wouldn't be Brutes. I would reanimate the level 2 Inventor over the level 3 Inventor, and then reanimate the level 3 Inventor over some Gizmo, and the board is 20-20, whatever. Like, it's... It's like two-thirds of a Acrogeus in every lane. Um, but Necro's already dead, so that didn't work out. I can hold Dreadbolt. Uh, she plays Warmonger Mod, which is probably the biggest, the most value that she has. She used to play Gizmo and a creature for free. Uh, the problem is it's in the back, right? So she can't block Dreadmaw because it has stealth. So Dreadmaw's going to kill her in all likelihood here. The board state is going to kill her, realistically. Like, it doesn't matter what she does. She can't block all these lanes. She can block one more lane. Uh, but right now, she can only block one of these lanes. So she activates her Soul Siphon to make one of her creatures really big. Unfortunately, that's going to play right into my Dreadbolt. But I guess that makes sense because the creature blocking the Dreadmaw blocking... In the same lane as the Dreadmaw, wasn't actually blocking it because it is stealth. So she activates it to make something really big, but it doesn't really matter because it is stealth. Uh, so it doesn't, like, literally, I just activate Dreadmaw and I win, um, I think. But I don't need to do that because I, I have dealing enough damage on the outside here. Uh, but the, the smart play here is just to Dreadbolt the 17 just to avoid the 17 power to avoid any sort of nonsense whatsoever. I think she rolled it back and did not use her Forge Board ability. She was contemplating it, but it didn't matter. But the smart play, I think, is just to Dreadbolt the 17, and she cannot block three non-stealth lanes in addition to the stealth lane, and the game is just over. I don't remember whether I actually activated it um, to threaten lethal specifically with the stealth, but it doesn't matter. I guess she can get around that if she had life gain, but she doesn't have either dark heart in play. I dodged a lot of dark heart activations in this game, although I did have removal for some of them. I dodged a lot of dark heart activations this game. So I don't remember what happens here. Okay, so she does end up using her Forge Board ability to make that, make that creature massive. And if she had a piece of removal to kill my Brute, then it gets really ugly because then we're doing lethal versus counter lethal. So by far the safest play here is just Dreadbolt the thing that can deal a bunch of damage. And that'll be... Oh, she didn't use it. She used it that didn't use it. I think she was just debating. It's fine. I don't think she ended up using it. Or maybe she did. We'll find out in a second. Based on the stats, but... Um, okay. I think I activate Dreadmaw here. I mean, like, I could just Dreadmaw to kill my own Rallying Inventor, which is silly, but it makes it 15. And then Dreadbolt the 17, which is just probably enough on face. I could get lethal through any number of means here. I could ignore the 17, hoping that she doesn't have removal. Uh, and yeah, I just dread the 17. That's fine. Yeah. And then the game's over. I think at this point she gets seeds because there's nothing that she can actually do. Uh, yeah. Well, that's the end of my recording. So I'm assuming at this point she can seeded. I mean, which, fairly straightforward. There's not anything else she can do if she can't answer this board state. So... We got there eventually. Uh, we dodged some interesting Dark Heart stuff. It's not really an optimized Dark Heart deck, um, but it is still very scary based on, you know, the double Dark Heart and seven spells. Uh, the scariest part is not that, though, in this particular matchup. For me, the scariest part is the Epidemic. And we played through two levels of Epidemic. We played through level two Epidemic, which is five, and level three Epidemic, which is eight, and still had boards left after that. So um, that's... That, that was a good sign for me for this deck going forward because I could play against some of the best types of removal that's tailored to remove this particular deck. So that was round three, so now we're two and one going into round four.